He himself gave apostles, prophets, evangelists. He himself. These are gifts that Jesus gave us with the ability to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. That, that's how easy it is. We're in a series called The Gifts of Jesus. And these are not to be confused with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We believe fully, fully in the person and the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit, fully. But these many times are lumped in with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but they're not the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're the gifts of Jesus. There are five of them, and he gave them when he ascended. And we covered the last one with the first one last week. So if you didn't get that message, if you haven't heard it, please go back and listen because it'll catch you up. And that was apostles. And this week we're gonna cover prophets. So Ephesians 4 verse 11 says, and he himself, that's Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, that's what we're gonna cover this week, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, I underline the word edifying also because to edify means to build or to construct. And so prophets equip, all five of these do this as well, and they Edify, and I know edify is not a word we use a lot, but it means they build or they build up. So here's point number one, prophets edify the saints. Number one, prophets edify the saints. Now we know they equip the saints, but they edify the saints. So do apostles, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Here's the reason I'm making such a big deal about this. Prophets build up the church they don't tear it down. And there's a whole lot of confusion and a lot of teaching that people think that I'm called to be a prophet, which means I'm called to tear down. I'm called to rip up. I'm called to, to come in and blow, blow in, blow up, and blow out. And that's not true. Prophets are to build the church. Edify, 1 Corinthians 14, 3, but he who prophesies speaks edification, that'd be building up, exhortation, that would be encouragement, and comfort to men. So they speak building up words, they speak encouraging words, and they speak comforting words. I've had many, many people say to me, Pastor Robert, we're really troubled because we get this, we've got this prophecy and we're very troubled about it. And so I just asked him one question. Uh, did it comfort you? Or I could say include, did it, com did, it, did it encourage you? Did it build you up? And when they say no, I said, then don't receive it. Because we just read it right there. Are y'all following me? Okay, even though there's a bunch of you, you're being quiet this week, all right? It says, he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort. Prophets do not tear down the church. And then some people will say, well, uh, I'm a little more like an Old Testament prophet. <laughs> no, you're like what you think an Old Testament prophet is like because I'm gonna read you an Old Testament verse now about some Old Testament prophets and watch what they were doing. Ezra 5 verse one, then the prophet, watch how many times the, a form of this word is used in the sentence. Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Iddo, prophets prophesied, so there's no doubt uh, what they are and what they were doing, to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them, so Zerubbabel, the son of Shetiel, and Yeshua, the son of Josadak, rose up and began to build the house of God. Not tear down the house of God, 
build the house of God, which is in Jerusalem, and the prophets of God were with them, helping them. What were the prophets helping to do? Build the house of God, not tear down the house of God. Now, I think that people get, have a misunderstanding of an Old Testament scripture, which I'm gonna show you so that if you say, well, I still have a little something in me, I'm gonna clear it up for you, okay? Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I sanctified you or set you apart is what that means. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. God speaking to Jeremiah. And then verse nine, he tells him what he's going to do. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have set my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms. Now that's real important. To root out, to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. To, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, and to build and plant. He named six things there. Four of them seem negative. I actually used to make an incorrect theological statement. I know that's a shocker. <laughs> but I was young in the ministry. I used to say, according to this verse, because I'm also a math guy, two-thirds of a prophet's ministry is negative, because four out of six were negative, it seemed not positive, I used to say that. Okay, what I didn't, under, didn't understand at that time was the context of the verse. He said, I've set you over kingdoms. And the Bible talks about two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. Here's what he's saying, I've called you to tear down, to throw down, to pull down and to destroy the kingdom of darkness and to build and to plant the kingdom of light. God has never called prophets to tear down the body of Christ or to tear down people. Now, sometimes God uses prophets and all of us to speak correction. Even friends, it says, when a friend speaks correction to us, it's healing to us. So yes, he speaks correction, but he doesn't come to discourage us. He comes to encourage us. And I've told you many times, but it might hit with the first time or maybe first time you heard it. Encourage simply means to put courage in. Discourage simply means to take courage out. So after you have a conversation with someone, does the person feel more courage or less courage? That'll tell you whether you really spoke the word of the Lord, even that we correct or speak the truth in love. Um, I remember years ago, years and years ago, there was uh, someone that I felt like that the enemy was trying to use and the guy was a really good guy. He was a good guy but I felt like the enemy had gotten in and I talked to Pastor Jack Hayford about it and Pastor Jack said, Robert, you can be gracious with the person, but don't be gracious with the spirit. And what I realized he meant was, remember, this is a person that Jesus died for, that Jesus loves, that is the son of God. You be gracious when you talk with him, but when you get on your knees, you don't be gracious with that spirit. You rebuke that spirit and you take authority over that spirit and you tear down the kingdom of darkness while you build up the kingdom of God. Amen. When you see a friend or your spouse being attacked by a spirit, anger or bitterness or unforgiveness or resentment, maybe even toward you, or fear, or anxiety, or worry, or lust, or pride. I'm talking that, they'll stay with me. Even a spouse, when you see your spouse being attacked by a spirit of lust, or pride, or anger, or bitterness, or it might even be directed toward you. Listen to me, don't attack the person. Attack the spirit. 
in prayer. Build up and encourage the person. See, Debbie has done that for me for many, many years. When she would see me under attack, she would encourage me. You're a great man of God. You do great things. God uses you. Even though I was under attack, but when she got on her knees, she took authority over that demonic spirit that was coming against her husband and against her family. So number one, prophets edify the saints. Here's number two, prophets equip the saints. Now remember, all five do this. He himself, Jesus, gave gifts to men or mankind. Remember that word is humanity. He gave gifts to all of us, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. So, so all of them equip the saints. But if I said to you, what do prophets do? Most would answer prophesy. Okay, all saints prophesy. That's part of the work of the ministry. I'm literally gonna show you a verse in a moment that says all can prophesy. All, I'm gonna show it to you. But prophets don't prophesy as prophets. They prophesy saints. As prophets, according to Ephesians 4, they equip the saints for the work of the ministry. You follow me? And we saw a moment ago that when you prophesy, the main thing is you encourage people. So prophets equip us to hear God and to encourage people with a word from the Lord. Now, it's not on the same level as the Bible, obviously, but you, you, many, many times we say something to someone and they'll say to us something like this, you have no idea how much I needed to hear that today. Or we feel like sending them a card and putting a scripture on it and they call us or write us or text us back and say, that's the exact scripture when I got your card that I had in my quiet time that morning. That's, that's you prophesied. You, there's no way out of 31,103 scriptures that you're smart enough to get the same scripture the same day. But the Holy Spirit is. So that's, that's prophesying. That's ministering to someone the word of the Lord. Look, um, Acts 15, verse 32. Now Judas and Silas, themselves being prophets also, exhorted and strengthened the brethren with many words. It didn't say they tore down and weakened the brethren. It said they built them up and they strengthened them. This is all through scripture. Beware of people who say they are prophets, but they tear down the church. Beware. Let me, let me just help you a little bit further. They have blogs. <laughs> Did that help you? And their, their, blo their whole blog is to tear down people in the church. Isn't that amazing? And they think they're on a mission from God to tear down people in the church. How deceived. How deceived. Beware of people who tear down the church and tear down leaders in the church. Beware of fortune tellers. Men and women who say they're prophets, but their whole thing is to tell the fortune tell the future. Prophets equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Now, there are times when God tells us, Agabus did this, we read the scripture last week, about something in the future. That's, yes, yes, God does you do that sometimes. But mainly he comes to encourage, and prophets' main job, their main job is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. That's where I gotta keep you. Um, you know, I've, I've been around church a long time now, and I've been in ministry leadership for a long time. I've been around long enough to know that there are some prophets that every January, they're gonna give us a word about what's gonna happen that year. 
And I've been around long enough to know they're going to say something big's going to happen in the spring and something big's going to happen in the fall. Can I tell you something? Something big happens every spring and something big happens every fall. And then they take the credit for it. Then they say, that was my prophecy. That was what I was talking about. That you can't imagine how many prophets said, you know, when COVID hit, they, they were telling us as leaders of the church, pastors and, and pastors of large congregations in America, they were telling us, you know, God gave me a word about this. You know, that something was going to hit in April. I thought, well, it didn't quite hit in April. It hit a little before April. But something big was going to happen. And those same prophets said, but the Lord told me it's going to pass over by Passover. Passover is what we would call Easter in the Christian church, right? Okay. And I'm not saying it's, it's not called that in the Christian church. I mean, Christian church don't recognize because they don't study their Jewish heritage. Okay. Well, they didn't pass over by Passover. So then the same prophet said, well, what I meant <laughs> was that it was gonna begin to pass over by Passover, but it will be in our rear view mirror by Pentecost. They literally said that. Pentecost, I, I, I taught on this last year, Passover to Pentecost is how many days? You better remember this, 50 days. Well, it wasn't in our rearview mirror 2020, 50 days after Easter. It's just now starting to get a little more in the rearview mirror. And we still have a long way to go, but we've come a long way. I'm just saying beware because they say I'm a prophet. And so that means I can tell the future or God gives me insight. Please hear me it fulfills a need in them to be important. And I'm gonna tell you, it'd be a whole lot better if they would equip the saints for the work of the ministry and send the saints out to do the ministry than to draw, try to draw attention to themselves. So here's point number three, how can I be a prophet? In other words, you, how, how can I be a prophet? Now, I'm not talking about one who equips others, I'm talking about one who encourages others, see? because prophets equip us to encourage. Apostles equip us to be sent with a message. That's what we covered last week. Prophets equip us to be able to learn to hear God and speak God's word to encourage others. Did everyone hear that? Because that's real important. So how can I be a prophet or an encourager? Okay, it's very, very simple. It's so simple, it's unbelievable. All you have to do is make yourself available to be equipped. Because prophets are gifts from Jesus. These are gifts, Jesus himself, and he himself gave apostles, prophets, evangelists. He himself, these are gifts that Jesus gave us with the ability to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. That, that's how easy it is. So you just make yourself available to be equipped. That, that's it. And, and, and to be discipled. Guess what? You ready for this? Where I'm saying make yourself available to be equipped. This is gonna shock you. Guess what? We have equipping classes. We have small groups to be discipled because you need to be discipled and you need to grow in God's word. And you grow in prophecy. We're gonna see in a moment that we learn to prophesy. We don't start out as, as being the best prophets or the best encouragers. We just learn, we grow in it. We grow in everything we do. I, I've been at, I, you remember I used to travel for a season, I, I spoke in very large churches and large coliseums and things, but for a while I spoke in very small churches, very small, very small. I had a guy tell me one time, a pastor tell me how to get to his church. He said, come down this road, out of town, and we, when, when you see where the old oak tree used to be, turn left. <laughs> I 
I remember thinking, are there grieving squirrels? I mean, how, do, how will I know? How will I know where the old oak tree used to be? You know, and then he actually told me, Debbie heard this, he told me, he said, and then you're gonna be going down this road and you're gonna cross a bridge. When you cross the bridge, two big white dogs are gonna chase your car. <laughs> Anyone ever seen that? You cry. And when you're walking or something, a dog, wah, 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 the whole way. And then when he gets to the end of the fence, he just stops and goes back. Okay. She so said, two big white dogs are going to chase your car. When they stop, turn left. <laughs> Happened just like you said. So I, I spoke in some very small churches. So, this, so, so I heard some prophecies from people who were learning to prophesy, Okay. Okay, I'm just, uh, so one, and they're kind of humorous. So one guy said, he stood up in the church and he said, as I was with my servant Noah, when he parted the Red Sea, I will be with thee. <laughs> Noah didn't part the Red Sea. That was Moses. Another fellow said, as I said in my word in 1 Corinthians, or was it 2 Corinthians? Well, uh, God knows where it was. And then I didn't hear this one. A friend of mine heard this one, but he was in Alabama, and this fellow stood and prophesied, the Lord, thus says the Lord, I know you're scared. Had a T on the end, scared. I know you're scared. Sometimes I get scared myself. <laughs> it's not real doctrinally sound nor is it very encouraging <laughs> that sometimes the Lord gets scared himself, okay? But we can all learn to prophesy. Here's the verse, 1 Corinthians 14, 31, for you can all prophesy. Do you see that? That's the Bible. You can all encourage people. And I'll tell you in a minute why it is encouraged. One by one, that all may learn, so you can all learn, watch, and all may be encouraged. See, if prophecy didn't mean to encourage, then he, he would say, you can all prophesy that all may be discouraged, that all may feel bad about themselves. No, you can all prophesy that all may feel good about themselves and be encouraged, and you can all learn. You can all prophesy and you can all learn. I was ministering at church one time, and I was there to learn to prophesy. And the, the older prophets were teaching me. It was a presbytery service, and uh, they had already prophesied over this young lady, but they said to me, now, if you get a word at any point, you share it. And she was, I, could, I, I just kept getting this word and kept getting this word, but I was too scared. I was a very young man. And finally, they had already, all three, they'd already prophesied over, and she got up and she was walking away, and all of a sudden, I just said to her, you do too have a good testimony. I mean, I just couldn't stop. I just, it just came out of me. And she stopped and turned around, and I said, you were raised by very godly parents. You were raised in the church. You gave your life to the Lord at an early age, but you think because you've never gotten drunk and you've never done drugs that you don't have a good testimony, but you do have a good testimony and you are called to be a missionary. And the whole church stood up and started applauding. What I found out later was she was the pastor's daughter. I'm glad I said that you had godly parents. <laughs> And your parents were alcoholics. And, you know, I'm glad I didn't since. Okay. She had stood in front of the church and she said, I'm asking for God to say to me, next week I'm a presbytery candidate. I'm asking for God to say one thing. She said, I don't feel like I have a good testimony. I was raised by godly parents, as you know. I got saved when I was young. I've never gotten drunk. I've never done drugs. So I don't feel like I have a good testimony, but I feel like I'm called to be a missionary. You can all learn and you can all encourage people that others can be encouraged also. Because Jesus, when he ascended, gave gifts, five gifts, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. 
Isn't it great that when Jesus ascended, he himself gave gifts to men? Jesus gave us apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And this week we talked about prophets. He gave us prophets to equip us. And according to the Bible, the prophets encouraged people. So Jesus gave us men and women in the body of Christ to equip us to be able to encourage other people. So here's your homework assignment. I want you to try to find someone either today or this week that you can encourage. Maybe you could send a card with a scripture, or maybe you could just talk to that person at work and just say, you know, you do such a great job at everything you do. Let's just go around encouraging people, and then we let the Lord do the rest of what he wants to do in their lives. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. I'm gonna continue this series next time, The Gifts of Jesus. I'll see you then.